This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Risk! Risk is our business! That's what the starship's all about! That's why we're aboard her! From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Way to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. It's time for another TV legend retrospective. Mm -hmm. And this time, it's James Tiberius Kirk himself, William Shatner. Actor, writer, director, musician, and horse enthusiast. William Shatner was born in Montreal, Quebec, Canada to a Jewish family. All his grandparents emigrated from Europe. After getting a degree in economics, he got a job as a business manager at the Canadian National Repertory Theatre, where he ended up training as a Shakespearean actor. He moved on to Ontario's Stratford Shakespeare Festival, playing roles in Oedipus Rex, Henry V, and Tamburlaine the Great, the latter becoming his first Broadway work. His first film and TV work were also in Canada, in the film Butler's Night Off in 1951 and Ranger Bob in their version of Howdy Doody, 1954, later getting a recurring role in the Canadian anthology series Encounter. Moving to America, he got a role in the film The Brothers Karamazov in 1958 while doing a lot of live TV dramas and anthologies. He got a regular role in a version of Nero Wolf, but it only lasted a few episodes. He returned to Broadway and got good reviews in The World of Susie Wong and A Shot in the Dark. He was originally considered to be in the same class as Paul Newman or Steve McQueen, but his work attitude, he would always say yes, <laughs> impacted a possible film career. He did get a significant role in the film Judgment at Nuremberg, but then went back to TV, but he did happen to do two classic Twilight Zone episodes, Nick of Time and Nightmare at 20,000 Feet. There's a man on the wing of the plane! As well as an Outer Limits episode called Cold Hands, Warm Heart. The latter might have indicated the trajectory of his later career because he played a returning astronaut from Project Vulcan. More TV guest roles followed, along with a co-starring role on For the People as an assistant DA. It only ran 13 episodes, but his co-star was a 24-year-old Jessica Walter. In 1966, he starred in a very strange film called Incubus. Leslie Stevens, the creator of The Outer Limits, wanted to do a moody, otherworldly film. So all the dialogue is in Esperanto, a constructed language with no native speakers. Cinematographer Conrad Hall would go on to win three Oscars for Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, American Beauty, and Road to Perdition. But for some reason, no expert on Esperanto was on the set, and there are many mispronunciations. The film was considered lost for decades, but a copy was found in France in 1996. Shatner was then cast in his signature role on Star Trek, a show that would run for three seasons and typecast him for years. He was, of course, the second actor to play the captain. The first pilot starred Jeffrey Hunter, who then moved on to films and unfortunately died at a fairly young age. We could talk about Star Trek for several episodes and not even scratch the surface, so we're not going to. Yes. After the show's cancellation, Shatner found very little work. At one point, he lived in a camper out like, like on a beach and took any jobs he could to support his family. He had actually divorced his first wife during the series. He's been married four times. By the mid-70s, he was starring in schlock films like Big Bad Mama, The Devil's Reign, and horror at 37,000 feet. He was also doing TV guest spots and game shows. He was apparently the first choice to host Family Feud, but it went to Richard Dawson. He also did commercials, notably for Promise Margarine. Promise. <laughs> Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, found a way to bring the show back, in a way. The animated series aired for 22 episodes on Saturday morning TV with the voices of Shatner and most of the original cast Walter Koenig, a.k.a. Chekhov, was excluded to save money. There are actually a few decent episodes due to the use of the original show writers, but there is a lot of goofiness. Shatner got another starring opportunity in the Western-slash-secret agent show Barbary Coast, but it only lasted 14 episodes. From what I've seen of that, it was basically the Wild Wild West, except in San Francisco. 
By the late 70s, the omnipresence of Star Trek syndication had created a new generation of fans, and a new Trek TV series was in pre-production. It was called Star Trek Phase 2. And then Star Wars hit the silver screen, the TV show was scrapped, and production began on Star Trek The Motion Picture. By the way, one of the reasons that The Motion Picture was the most expensive film to that point, about $40 million, is that it included the cost for the entire TV series. Scripts had been written, sets had been built, costumes had been made, casting was completed. By the way, some of the scripts for that show ended up being reused in Star Trek The Next Generation. And an attempted TV movie, which ended up morphing into the theatrical film. All of that was built into the cost of the movie. This would lead to a series of seven films with Shatner from 1979 to 1994. Suddenly, Shatner was a bankable star again, and he parlayed that into what is his second best-known role, T.J. Hooker, a police series which ran from 1982 to 86. He started his directing career there doing 10 episodes. He also directed the fifth film, which most consider to be the weakest of the set. He won Razzies as both actor and director. He followed that up as the host of documentary series Rescue 911. Shatner then branched out as the author of a series of tech war sci-fi novels, it's generally believed all were ghost-written, which he turned into a series of TV movies and a short-run TV series where he also made appearances. He also wrote a series of autobiographies, mostly surrounding his work on Star Trek. Star Trek Memories, Star Trek Movie Memories, Get a Life, Up Till Now, and many sci-fi novels co-written with others. He scored appearances in the Sandra Bullock Miss Congeniality franchise as a beauty pageant host, and he actually hosted the real Miss USA pageant during that time. Two other movies during that period were Osmosis Jones and Dodgeball. A planned appearance on Star Trek Enterprise was canceled along with the series. His work as a pitch man for Priceline.com got the attention of David E. Kelly who created the eccentric attorney Denny Crane for his series The Practice and spinoff Boston Legal, with one Emmy for Shatner on each series. Rumors of a Shatner appearance in the J.J. Abrams' Star Trek reboot were likely just that, rumors. There was also a short-run CBS sitcom called Stuff My Dad Says, playing the dad, because you know a show based on a Twitter account will be a hit. He has also been a frequent narrator of TV and film documentaries and got involved in music videos and graphic novels. Shatner also had a number of interview series, none of which ran for more than a handful of episodes. His latest TV project is Better Late Than Never, where he and three other legends, Henry Winkler, Terry Bradshaw, and George Foreman, travel the world and act as ugly Americans. And of course, we can't forget Shatner the singer. He's infamous for his spoken word performances covering famous songs to the point of many, many parodies. He did six original albums between 1968 and 2013. When he's not doing all of these things, he's a champion horse breeder and presenter of quarter horses with a 360-acre farm in Kentucky. His various awards, at least ones we haven't already mentioned, two Saturn Awards, and that's for science fiction, one Golden Globe, He's in the TV Hall of Fame. He got a NASA Distinguished Service Medal, the Hollywood and Canada <laughs> Walks of Fame, and the Order of Canada. He is IMDb credits, 239 as an actor, 18 as a writer, 23 as a producer, and 407 as himself. <sighs> At age 86, he's still going strong. But the biggest joke on that new series is that Shatner's going to die in one of the yeah. countries they visit. <laughs> They're betting on it. <laughs> I don't know if I'd like that. Mm. <laughs> so, if you like William Shatner, you should keep watching him. He probably needs the money. Yeah. And in the meantime, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching.